we welcome you to the 18th annual BizTech at Wharton Conference. The purpose of our conference was very much about like, you know, getting people career opportunities and just educating them in some of the latest tech trends and going deep into understanding what are some of the implications of the trends that they're seeing. And we're the only company out there that has search, premium display, mobile, video, and native advertising all on one single platform with one single data set. And what I was talking to you before is all the work we do now isn't about, hey, how do you create new great apps, it's what's the elasticity effect between advertising to customers who searched for a specific topic and then saw a display ad uh, and then uh, were presented with that same thing on mobile. But when you do those things, you have extreme returns of you know two, three, four X in terms of the efficacy. So it turns out that tying it all together works really well. We are like the hottest tech company in the Valley. The energy and buzz and M&A, you know, like when we go and talk to people about selling their company, they could choose any company they want to and they come and they want to come work at Yahoo because we're like the world's largest startup. You see it in, in um, things like our stock price, you see it in the amount of M&A activity, you see it in the number of people who are coming to work at Yahoo. Um, and the, the mentions and, and notoriety we're receiving around the world with different things we're doing. I worked in the big data analytics space over the summer, so for me it was personally really useful to see uh, Ned talk a lot about pr pragmatic advertising and big data analytics and how you can really make advertising useful to consumers as content. My purpose of attending this conference is to get to know the tech community a little bit better and check out kind of the other startups going on in the pen community. When the tagline Broadcast Yourself came out, the idea is what if you could create a show and instantly anyone in the world could consume it? We've always said at YouTube, it's like the one place where your video will talk back. For a typical video that might have, you have the own views, which is what someone uploaded, and then you have all the fan-picked views, the excerpts, the mashups, et cetera, et cetera, which basically blow out the audience three to four times. When you upload that video and I own the rights to it, Instead of saying, hey, just take it down and don't come back and you're in trouble, hey, that's a pretty cool video. I'm actually going to promote it and monetize it. And that kind of dialogue is amazing. You could almost think of it in some ways as this is our equivalent of a retweet, right? You take a video, you take, you take it down, you cut it up, you mash it up, and you share it with someone else. And this has turned into a very powerful business for us. And it's resulting in people really talking about it more as a promotional tool versus just about a DRM tool. You learn as much as by observing than what you actually dictate in terms of your strategy. The YouTube presentation was fantastic. Um, Shiva did a really great job talking about all of the way that content creators are finding ways to make money on YouTube by producing high quality content and finding audiences that they never would, would have been able to find before. It's really interesting, first of all, to be here listening to people talk about uh, the strategy at YouTube, Yahoo, Google, um, and to think about the, you know, I, I understand these things from the perspective of a user, but I've never been inside a tech company. So it's been really interesting to hear how they're thinking about leveraging what users are doing to design their strategy. People go to business school to get jobs, so you really need to have conferences. You need to have vehicles for people to interact with professionals, and conferences are a great way to aggregate professionals and students and you know, provide an open dialogue environment. In companies, we have this happening. Systems of engagement are changing, so people bring their own uh, iPhones and Android devices, tablets, all of this stuff into the enterprise today. And on the other side, we've got the old systems of record. Lots of companies are now looking at cloud tech as a way to bridge this gap. So this is our opportunity. And so what we do at Box is super simple. I take your file and put it in the cloud. And it's not hard in concept, right? but a lot of the things that we face in the marketplace today make this business super complex. Just studying the marketplaces around us, looking at features, um, look at, looking at marketplaces that we should enter or should not enter, looking at our competition. And so all of the things that we do around security and scale, um, we have offices opening around the world, but where do we put data? Um, and the, you guys know all about this Edward Snowden thing that caused, caused a huge ripple through the community from a security point of view. And so all of these become, uh, become our challenges. Senior Vice President from Box, the way he 
explained all the competition and how Dropbox and everything is changing the dynamics in the industry. That was very fascinating for us. All our keynotes were actually Wharton alums, and I think that just says a lot to the fact that they're at such high-level positions in tech firms, and they're really inspirational to all of us. We had like men and women both speak about their background and how they how Wharton really helped them get there. So I think it was uh, it, it just brought everything together for us, especially as we yeah. as second years are heading out uh, you know into the world.